time. This is the Matrix route. There are a few things about it that are a big deal. And I'm not talking about its size. To me, size is a disadvantage that needs to be justified. So, something this massive needs to have some pretty special features. Let's check them out. Now, I'm not going to go over all its functions in this video. That's been done very well already by Mark Doty at Ask.audio with over three hours of video over two courses. I'll leave a link to that in the description. Rather, what I want to talk about is only the things that make the Matrix boot really special. The things that most other analog synths don't have, what I call its superpowers, and it has quite a few. That said, I will start with a brief overview of its sections. This is the oscillator section. There are two complex oscillators and one simpler one, which is also an LFO. Then there's the mixer section for each of the three oscillators, as well as noise and an external source. The filter section has two filters, Steiner filter up here, ladder filter down here, and a master cutoff knob to control them both. We'll talk about this in depth in a bit. The modulation section has two more LFOs in addition to VCO3, which is LFO3, and three envelopes. This is the matrix section. We'll obviously talk about this, but in general, the matrix has three modes, preset selection mode, sequencer mode, and the mod matrix. This is the effects section with a variety of analog based effects. This part helps control the sequencer and arpeggiator and the left hand controller area with four macro knobs, which we'll talk about later. On the back, there are a bunch of connectivity options, including expression pedal inputs and a patch bay, which we will talk about later as well. So that's the overview. Now let's talk about what I call its superpowers. The first superpower is duo split. Now, the matrix root has only one set of three oscillators, and typically, synths like that are monophonic, which means they can play one sound at a time through a single filter and a single VCA. Change a note and the sound changes. However, the matrix root lets you chop the synth up into two. Half the keyboard controls one set of oscillators, and the other half controls a second set. And you can see the routing here. Oscillator three goes through the lower filter and oscillators one and two go through the upper filter. Now, what that means is that I can shape one sound completely independently of the other. In terms of envelopes, the top two envelopes control the top half. So you can see envelope one and envelope two triggering when I hit this key, this one controlling the filter, this one controlling VCA number one, the top VCA, and then envelope number three controls both the filter and VCA for the bottom split. The end result is that you have a completely different sound for the top half compared to the bottom half. Now, the default is halves, but you can split the keyboard up anywhere you want. The arpeggiator and sequencer applied to the left portion. So essentially, the Matrix Brute is a two-voice polyphonic multi-timbral synth, which is a pretty awesome superpower. The second Matrix Brute superpower is its paraphonic mode. So let me explain what that is. I'll start with a blank preset. So typically a mono synth will play one note at a time and we can add more oscillators, but it's still the same note. However, in paraphonic mode, you can play chords, one note for each oscillator. Now this is a pretty big deal for what is a three oscillator synth. But something else that's very special is going on here. 
Typically with paraphonic synths, once you open the VCA, all three oscillators will play at the same time. Here it's different, listen closely. Each of the notes has its own envelope, because somewhere in here, when you activate paraphonic mode, two additional hidden VCAs come into play and control each of the oscillators every time you hit a note. You can hear this a little bit better if I add some attack. Look how the other notes join in. Three separate VCAs. Now the reason this is not full polyphony is that these notes still share the same filter envelope, but it's pretty darn close. Okay, on to superpower number three, which is the matrix. And in particular, since it has three functions, the mod matrix. But let's talk briefly about its two other functions. As I mentioned before, there are three modes to the matrix. The first is preset mode, where you can go in and simply select a preset and play it. Then easily switch to something else. Pretty straightforward, and there are 256 presets that you can store at a time. The second mode for the matrix is sequencer mode. Not all presets have sequences, and you can program your own. Uh, this, for example, does. Straightforward, you can set a sequence length of anywhere between here at 16 or actually 8. 16 and up to 64 steps. There's also an arpeggiator. And a nice sequencer arpeggiator mode. Uh, it basically lets you take up to four notes, spread them across three octaves, and do funky things with them. Anyway, that's preset selection and sequencing, but the real star of the show is the mod matrix. I'll start a new preset just to show you how this works. This is a clean matrix. And the way that it works is quite straightforward. On the left here are modulation sources, and on top here are modulation destinations. 12 are fixed and four are customizable to any one of the knobs on the panel. What that basically means is that if this were a modular synth with jacks, imagine an input jack next to each and every one of these knobs and sliders. That's pretty wild. So let's take as an example, what if I wanted aftertouch to turn the ladder filter cutoff point? That's pretty simple. I'll look for aftertouch as a modulation source, look for the ladder filter cutoff, press this button, set the amount, it's bipolar, either positive or negative, and aftertouch now controls the ladder filter cutoff point. If I wanted it to control the Steiner cutoff point, I would very simply add that as a destination as well. And now I'm controlling both filters. Now I mentioned before this knob controls both cutoff points. What if I wanted to modulate this knob? It's not one of the destinations. In that case, I just press one of the configurable buttons, turn the knob, and now this column represents both VCF cutoff points. Then I could disable these two, turn this on, set an amount, and now I'm controlling both filters because I'm modulating this knob from here on the matrix. Now this, to me, is a big deal, because typically a mod matrix in a synth is hidden away in a menu somewhere, or in semi-modular synths, something that you take a patch cable and plug in from one point to the other. And essentially that's what's going on here. This dot represents a patch cable going out from a virtual input for aftertouch and going in to virtually, if there was an input jack here, for the master cutoff. So in essence, each of these little grid dots represents one cable connecting an output to an input. And this does a few special things. First thing, it invites you to modulate, sort of if you have only one dot. I mean, come on, you can do better than that. 
which means the matrix brute welcomes you to create complex sounds. And the second thing is that it's very clear to you at all times exactly what's going on in terms of modulation. Let me give you an example. I'll pick a preset, uh, let's say this one. Let's check out its mod matrix. Now, this seems a little bit complex, and when you listen to the preset, there's a lot going on here, right? But that's the beauty of the matrix. It helps you figure out what's going on, right? So you can see there's a lot of filter action going on here, being impacted by LFO1, LFO3, um, the sequencer, right? And the keyboard, that's the ladder filter, for example. And you can see there's a lot of action going on here, affecting noise levels, uh, VCO2, and you can actually modulate also coordinates on the grid if you want. So it makes it very clear to see what is being affected, but it also makes it clear what you can play around with to change things. So for example, we'll get to these macro knobs later, but basically for every preset, they can do different things. What do they do? Well, it's very easy to see in the mod matrix. So let's check out, for example, what the macros do. Macro number one, if you follow the rows on the grid, affects the level of VCO2 and the metalizer for VCO2. Follow the row for macro 2, and you'll see it's affecting the filter cutoff. Look at what's lit on the row for macro 3. It's controlling LFO1 amount. And you don't need to guess what macro 4 does, because the buttons are lit up on its destinations. So what initially seems complex is actually pretty simple. So if you think about the alternative, you see why this is a superpower. It's either 20 different patch cables going from one place to another, or 20 different menu items hidden somewhere. So the matrix in the matrix brute is no toy or gimmick. It's a powerful synthesis tool that's easy to use and easy to understand, even if you come back to a patch a year later. A few special things here too, by the way, aside from the modulation inputs you'd expect, like envelopes and LFOs, you also have an envelope follower for incoming audio. Keyboard or sequencer has an input and a sequence modulation row. That's this row here on the sequencer. And aside from the four macro inputs here, you can also take input from expression pedals. So that's superpower number three. Let's move on to superpower number four. And that's these four macro knobs. Now I sort of mentioned them before in passing, but check out what happened before and you'll see why these are so important. Number one is unlike a regular knob, which controls just one thing, you can assign each macro to up to 16 different things. And each movement in a knob can either move them in a positive or negative direction based on this knob. The second cool thing about them is that they'll show you on the display what their reset or original position is. So if you mess things up and you modulate too much and you want to go back to the preset as it was, go back home so to speak, you can easily do that with the numbers on the display. That's especially useful when you're changing pitch if you want to get back to your home base pitch as easily and quickly as possible. The last thing that's nice about the macro knobs is that once you've created a patch and figured out where it is about it that makes it special and you want to change expressively, you put that stuff here and you don't have to remember where it is across all the grid here. So for example, this control, or this one. Okay, on to superpower number five, and that's the fact that the matrix root has not one, but two separate filters. A more gritty and aggressive Steiner filter and a classic ladder filter. Now forget about the fact that they have different character, just the fact that you can use them together in unison is pretty amazing. Now there are two ways to route the filters. You can either use them in parallel, which means send oscillators some to this one, some to this, or both to both of them, and then modulate them differently. Check out, for example, this sound. It's a combination of this, right, a steady tone, and then this. It's only possible with two filters. Each of these two filters have a 12 dB or 24 dB per octave option. Both can be either low pass, band pass, or high pass, and the Steiner filter has a notch filter option as well. 
there's a separate drive for each and separate brood factor, which is a feedback loop for each of the filters. And then like I showed you before, you can set their levels independently regardless of the input on the mixer. Now we've got five audio sources, like I mentioned before, three oscillators, a noise generator, and external input from the back. When the filters are set in parallel, you can choose for any one of these five which filter it will go through. None, the top one, the Steiner filter, the bottom ladder filter, or both. Now the filters can also be routed one after another if you want, and you do this if you wanted to apply both a high pass and low pass filter to a sound or a couple of band pass filters to impact the sound at once. So this combination of two unique multi-mode filters with a mixer section where you can route sounds independently to each and every one of them, considering how important a filter is for the timbre of your sound is one heck of a superpower for the Matrix Brute. <laughs> Okay, on to superpower number six. This one is simple, but important, which is presets. Now I mentioned this before, you can store up to 256 presets here where the mod matrix, the knob positions, everything is stored and recallable within a second. That's something that's not trivial for an analog synth. Now I know that there are snobs out there that don't like factory presets, but I'm talking about storing 256 of your sounds, right? Plus there's software which lets you download these to a computer and replace them entirely. So the ability to save your own presets on an analog synth, considering that each and every one of these buttons is a cable, a virtual cable going from one point to another, that's pretty incredible in my book. So while it is charming to patch cables and do things that you'll never experience again and so on, it's also nice to be able to recall something cool that you made a year or two down the road. Okay, on to the next impressive feature of the Matrix Brute, which is just the sheer number of features that they put in here and the fact that there are no menus, that this screen is just to tell you what's going on here. Every knob has its own function or every button has its own function and that's it. So just to give you an example, there are four types of noise generators depending on the frequencies you want noise in. Control for note priority is right here. Control for legato right here. These are things typically hidden in a menu, having quick access to stuff, like for example, this crazy audio mod section, which I don't have time to get into, but having that right here is a big deal because having something accessible means that you use it. Something that's in a menu or something that's a shift press away, just a lot of times gets forgotten. matrix brute superpower in my book is connectivity and that's what's going on here in the back. Now there are a few layers to this. If you use MIDI you have both via USB and through the MIDI jacks control of every single one of the knobs through MIDI. All the controls send out MIDI information so you can transmit, record, adjust and then later send back in MIDI automation information. And if control voltage is your thing, there are plenty of connectivity options here. Aside from multiple expression pedal inputs, there's a CV patch bay with 12 inputs and outputs. Now, at first I was a little bit disappointed that they're in the back and it would be great if they were up front. But what made this a little bit more bearable is the fact that the jacks are arranged very logically. The inputs are aligned to the mod matrix destinations and so are the outputs. So for example, if you want to control the metalizer of VCO1 using external CV, just plug it in the input in here. Similarly, the output of VCO1 is right behind here. 
So that's modular connectivity in a nutshell. If it interests you more, leave a comment below. I can make a whole video just about this. And that brings me to the last matrix brute superpower in my book, which is the effects section. And the beauty here is the character of the analog effect that they put here. It's a bucket brigade style delay, which has five different modes. And I'll take a clean preset, just a simple saw, maybe beef it up a bit. And let's see what the effects do to it. So first option is stereo delay. And you can set uh, the feedback level and delay time. Of course, you can modulate these as modulation destinations if you want. And you've got tone and stereo width. So that's the stereo delay, there's a mono delay as well. Chorus. And this changes into an LFO rate. And depth. Flanger. And then a reverberation, not exactly reverb. Sort of like a small room, not a major hall. So those are the Matrix Brute superpowers. Now there's a lot of stuff I didn't cover, right? The whole oscillator section, very special with the wave folding metalizer, pulse width modulation, the sub oscillators, which are configurable. The sequencer with um, its modulations and glide, slide, accent controls, all that stuff you can get on lower end synths, both by Arturia and by other companies. And like I said, it would take about three hours to cover everything this does. I just wanted to cover the main things that I think makes this stand out. So to wrap it up in conclusion, a big synth and obviously a hefty price tag to me are a disadvantage, not an advantage. It's something that needs to be justified. And yes, the combination of features or superpowers as I call them in this synth are what makes it stand out and what I think makes it a keeper. So that's it. If this clip was useful, please hit the like button. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments section below. Subscribe and ring the little YouTube bell if you want to see more synth reviews, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks very much for watching.